Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What? Um, Emma, did I do? Hello, shopping with LaFon. Hello, Plus and Air by TC. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Sunday Backyard Farmer. Yes, best yet. I'm live. Hi. Hello, beautiful people. Hi. Can y'all see me clear this time? Hello, none of your business. Yes, you guys, I am live. So this chat, you guys, is about winter gardening. So hello, Ocean Soul. Yes, this is about winter gardening. Y'all guys know that winter gardening, we get a break. <laughs> we get a break. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, best yet. Thank you. You was the first person that ever gave me a donation uh, through my PayPal. Thank you. Thank you. I'm always going to remember my first. Mommy. You was my first, baby. Yes, you was. Mommy. So, I'm making bread. Yeah, you're making bread. To the my friends. baby, I'm making bread, okay, <laughs> on a computer. So we're going to talk about winter gardening. Y'all excited about y'all winter gardening? Yeah. Yes, best yet. Yes, girl, you was the first. <laughs> Is y'all guys excited? I'm excited about winter garden. It's downtime. Yeah, winter garden. Yes, I'm so happy to be here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm feeling blessed to actually go live. I'm excited to go live. Um, the first time I went live on my channel, y'all was nervous. So this time I'm pretty much settled in. Um, I pretty much do this anyways when I'm on camera. So I'm excited to kind of like show you, you know, not such a, a stiff version of me. You know, sometimes I'm on the computer. It's just like, okay, I want to explain to you guys some things and come through and tell you uh, how I go about getting things done. So Oh, he missed the first one. Yeah, I did. It didn't go as well because the camera was really acting up. I wasn't getting a good signal. So this time I decided to go ahead and do it in the house. And it looks like it's working a lot better. Hey, bro. I, did you go live this Sunday? Because I don't think so. I don't think so. Yes. So... This live is about um, what to plant in August. So I have a video that I did already about what to plant in August. And I thought you didn't, Brooke. I thought you didn't because I'm normally on that. Um, so a lot of times, a lot of people don't think there's a lot of varieties that you can plant during the winter. You can plant a ton of things. Uh, during the winter, it's the best time to like get your garden piece on and get your next season ready. But um, so I wanted to kind of come on here and and talk about some of those things. So y'all guys getting ready for y'all fall and winter garden? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, nitrogen is good though during the winter. Um, the only thing is like for um 
like things like to get um like your broccoli, um your cauliflower stuff like that might not you want too much uh, nitrogen or your um your root crops you don't want too much nitrogen. But as far as like your cabbage, your lettuce, your collard greens, things like that, you want that nitrogen because it's all foliage, just nothing but leaves. Your mustards, those things really, really will like your nitrogen and kale. So some of the items, you guys, that I I got it spread out on this table. Uh, the first thing is uh, is our kohlrabis. So I will be planting kohlrabis. Kohlrabis is like um, it kind of reminds me of like a a little bit of a little sweet apple. Um, it's really good. Um, this plant right here does not like a lot of nitrogen because if not, you would get a lot of leaves. And you don't want the leaves. You want you want that center above right here. But I'm going to be planting kohlrabis. So you have y'all guys tried the kohlrabis yet? Do you guys enjoy eating those? Let's see what I got here. Everybody's speaking to each other. Yes, please hit the like button. Hit the like button. I really appreciate that. It helps out a lot with the channel. It does. It helps out a lot. I got to turn this down, so not yet. Got both varieties planted. Okay, yes. So I just, um, I have not planted anything yet. I have not planted any of my winter crops yet. Now, I plan on planting them sometime this week, but I will be putting them into um, styrofoam cups. I won't be direct sowing those. Now, you can direct sow some of your lettuce and stuff like that because, you know, the seed is really small. But I like to kind of put mine in trays so I can kind of place them where I want them. Never tried it before. It's really good. None of your business is really good. I think it's like um you it's like a sweet turnip bottom. If you like uh turnips, you um you will like that. Best yet, I got one, but I don't eat it. I did not eat it yet. Oh, you gotta try it. Um, you can actually just I like to roast it with a little bit of salt and pepper. That's it, just roast it. It's really good. Hey Gigi, good morning, lady. Moore's backyard gardener. Never tried it. What does it taste like? It tastes like a little apple. It's kind of sweet. It's kind of like a rutabaga, a turnip to me. Divine loves. I use paper bags to start seeds, then just bury the bag. Yes, you can do that too. It's uh they call it stripping. Uh, so if you take paper towel and lay it out on the paper towel, moist it and let it, um, you can, that's, that's called stripping. You can strip it so you can space out properly. You can do that as well. And, and make sure that you use a biodegradable though, um, material. If you're going to do that. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. It's really good. It's really good. I think you would like it, the um, kohlrabis. So I do have the kohlrabis. And the next thing that I will be starting to plant, you guys, is radishes. Now I have here the French breakfast. I have the purple plum. The sparkers. These are like really cute. And some daikon radishes. I'll be planting these this year. I do have some watermelon radishes, but I never get them to get to the size that I feel like they should get. So I like the smaller ones. They just work out better for me. So I stick with that. I still got the seeds, but I stick with the small um, radishes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello there. Wow. Hey, you're in the kitchen live. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Why I'm trying to catch up because I think some I think my computer wants to lag. I think yeah. it wants to lag, you guys. Uh oh. 
So I have, so some of you guys, some of the items that you plan on planting this winter, this fall. I have a ton of things. This year, I'll be planting watermelon radishes. Do not get it. This year will be your year for the watermelon radishes to do get up. The watermelon radishes get up, but they don't get, let me see if I can show you. It, it don't get to the size that it's supposed to get. So like my little radishes, they get to size. Um, but the watermelon radishes, it could be the seed. I had them for a little while, but uh, for some reason they would not get to size. So let me see if I can pull it up real fast. I know I got my little handy dandy book. I got my handy dandy book. You got a handy dandy book. My handy dandy book. Got handy dandy book. <laughs> um, right here, radishes. So right here is my watermelon radishes. You see them here? Yeah. I don't, um, they don't get to the size that yeah. I would like because they get really rooted, yeah. rooty when they're small and they haven't swole up. I mean, they, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's too rooted. It's too tough. Let's see if anybody got anything. I've already had a variety of lettuce and watermelon. Yes, I have a ton of lettuce. I think I have maybe over maybe 20 varieties of lettuce but i'm only gonna probably do maybe oh, maybe about 10 um varieties That's yeah amazing. about 10 varieties so what i have here y'all that's all my stuff so i had a video already yeah, kind of like what i've already liked to plant so there's a reason why i, I did this live is because i had a lot of people say there's not anything to grow in winter besides yeah, collard greens and cabbage it's, it's a ton of things um you need to go ahead and get yeah, these started if you're in to parsnips it takes a very long time to get these going and to harvest um according to this pack it's 130 days to harvest so if you're really into parsnips it's time to go ahead and get these in Okay, and uh, another one is Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts as well as another one that takes a long time to produce. So try to get these two in if that's if something that you want to uh, grow. Now, I might buy, honestly, this year I might just buy um, some starts um, because it just takes a long time to get the actual sprouts. And the store already will have that done for me. So, yeah, I might just do that and get a little six pack. <laughs> get a little six pack. Um, winter gourds. Not sure so if African giant gourds can start in the winter. Um, most of the time, any time for winter, um, you need to start those in the summer. So if you have any kind of gourd or any type of winter squash, that means you need to produce them during the yeah. summer and then basically you can store them during the winter. That, that's all that um, means when it comes down to the um, type of um, squash. I like a lot of people say summer and winter. Summer squash is just a soft skin squash. Winter squash is squash that you plant in the summer, but you will be able to harvest them and keep them during the, um, the winter. Hello, the everyday life of an, an OCD chick. I always stutter when I um, try to say your name, though. It's cute, though. I got a little of that, too. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit of OCD. I broke. Um, I got Brussels sprouts from last fall. Oh, you still got the plant. I'm confused. Are you got the plant and it still ain't produced, or <laughs> I bet, but it's cute though. I like it. I like your name though. I like your name. The worms did me in the squash and the zucchini. Oh, the vine boars, yeah, they're vicious. Um, but get some neem oil. 
because I I, um, I slacked up on it. I'm not even going to lie, you guys. Uh, so my squash and everything was doing amazing. But when I get tired, I get tired too. And the squash was like, look, it was just getting too big, too out of control. And I always go out there every morning and I'll cut a leaf and look and, you know, do my little thing. But when it rained constantly before I got sick, the rain alone, not being able to get to that plant, they took mm -hmm. off. Then yeah. the bugs just took off the squash boards and uh, I mean, the vine borer and the squash bugs, they just took over. And I think what I will do next year is to try to, like, keep it down is probably not have as many to deal with. Um, so I just kind of maintain um, what I have. Now, I do like doing different varieties and tasting a lot of different things. So that's why I always kind of do a whole bunch of different varieties of things because I do like to cook. I come from a family of chefs. So, um. I just prefer that uh, next year I just do uh, just a tad bit less. Can vine boards attack potatoes? No, but squash bugs would not mind harvesting and, and nesting on, on those leaves. Yeah, they would nest on anything, actually, any type of vine uh, plant, even your tomatoes, even your peppers. This, this in general, the squash bug would the nest itself but the vine board it will kill your plant um it really triggers just the squash plant sweet peas oh yes yeah, sweet peas it'd be soon to get those in too so there's a ton of things between peas your brassica I mean your cabbage your broccoli your cauliflower your romanesco all of that, you guys, you can plant now. So I will be showing you guys a video. I will be planting some more squash. Um, I would just be doing the crook neck and the zucchini um, out in the sand pit. I will be doing that because we have a long growing season here in zone eight. So you can definitely still plant those now and still be able to get a harvest is if you're still in one of those climates that have a long uh, season. And another thing that I would be planting is Swiss chard. You can plant this all year. This is a winter, summer, spring, fall loving crop you can plant this all year long it likes the heat it likes the cold um the only thing difference is in the summer the taste is just a little bit different versus when it is in the winter in the winter it gets sweeter the leaves get nice and sweet it's really good so this is like a go-to thing I, well, I have this in the garden now in the planters that's going up the staircase and on the table my prep table but i will be planting this again because uh, the ones that I have now will probably be going to seed. I'm just going to tear those out and put these in. Swiss chard. Any of y'all guys like Swiss chard? It kind of reminds me of a, a collard green. Um, not as good as a collard green, but it's, it's, it's very light uh, in flavor, I think. What is the best time to plant my collard greens and spinach in? central florida okay so for florida y'all guys is a lot hotter humid to me personally you have no problem with planting them this month or next month the problem is that you still need to make sure even though throughout the season it still gets chilly a little chilly you still want to put them in shade try to place them in a shaded area or somewhere on a porch where you can at least control a little bit of the humidity because if not, you probably get like um, uh, spots on it and uh, they look like uh, pimples or uh, like red circle spots. It's, it's actually a disease on the plant. You don't want to eat it once it gets that. And that's due to the humidity. Never taste Swiss chard? Bro, it's yummy. <laughs> Okay, it's water, yummy, water, it's water. yummy, yummy. Yeah. Yes, Gigi is yummy. He yeah. never tasted it. You will love it. You will love it. Um, what I tried, um, I put 
cooked it. Matter of fact, I got a video I did on how I cook my Swiss chard. It's it's yummy. I really like it. I like it. So the varieties too of kale, I'm going to be doing. I do the the dwarf uh, curly kale. Oh no. I do the dinosaur, the lacinato kale. This is the same as that, but it's just one gets bigger than the next. And I do the scarlet kale, which is the same as the, the dwarf curly kale. Besides, it turns purple only in the winter. It won't turn purple uh, until it gets really cold. It's going to be green for a very long time. Just to be honest, I have Swiss chart. I never harvest to taste, but... <laughs> Oh no, that's it. You gotta try it. You gotta try it. You gotta try it. it I like. I'm not gonna lie, you guys. I like bacon. I love bacon. I'll throw this in here with some onions, some garlic, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and sauté this up. This is good. This is good. I do the same thing though with the uh, kale as well. Now the only one I can eat like in a salad. Is the dinosaur kale, the lacinato kale? That curly kale, I can't eat that. Um, I can't eat that. It's too grainy. I can't eat that unless it's cooked. So, and then I'm gonna be planting you guys some beets. Mm. I got gold I beets. I got my Saigon turnips. Why you got everything you born? I got my yeah. red beets. I do have, oh yes, my purple oh, top no. turnips and my rutabaga. Oh. Yes, oh, and I actually got these seeds right here. I got these seeds from a uh, local nursery. So if you guys ever feel like y'all can't get seeds, try your local oh, no, nursery. No. You know, they carry it in bulk and um, they measure it out. So they don't come in packets, most of them. Did, did you say bacon? Yes, girl. Bacon. Ooh. Bacon. Yummy. Who don't like bacon? Love bacon. <laughs> oh, you got your bacon? You show me your bacon? Right there. <laughs> yes. We love bacon. <laughs> and then we eat bacon. Let's see what else I got. I got so much stuff on this table. Um, give you guys some ideas. We got the early golden acre cabbage. Wow. We got the red acre cabbage. Mommy, this is this small pea? This is a baby. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. You got it. We. Mommy, I got one on me. Yeah, I see. You're making clothing. Yeah, so, I can talk to the people. I will be <laughs> I will be planting you guys some Morris collard and my Georgia collards. The Morris collards get huge. So if you like the little smaller leaf um collard greens, that'll be the Georgia collards, but I like the Morris collards. Um on my Instagram, I had showed you guys um a photo of how big my Morris collar got. It almost covered me. It was Huge. It almost okay. covered my whole body. So I said, well, why not just plant a couple of these and not plant so many? So I could just have like plant like maybe six of these instead of planting. I think I planted last year maybe 24 collard greens. I, I just planted some more collards. Let's see here. Hello, Mississippi girl. Live. Hey, girl. Hi, Mississippi Live. Uh. Hey, girl. <laughs> I love baby zipper. Mm -hmm. I'm trying the Chinese and Wellsfield nose this last year. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at my baby. She's something else, ain't she? So, yes, I was definitely doing that. <laughs> I'm already planted my collard kale and rotation, some beets. Also planted some bush beans. Yes, you can plant beans. You especially if you got a long season, you could plant a whole bunch of things. Ain't she what? extra though? She's so extra. What? She's so extra. What? <laughs> Her mama just a tad bit extra. Just a smidgen. 
But um, Lizzie. I did want to come on here though and tell you guys some of the stuff that I will be planting. Um, I haven't got it started yet, but I'll be starting. But I want to go ahead and clean out the beds, amend the beds, because the back garden needs a lot of amending, especially after the squash bugs. You got to look for those uh, vine borer. So it's it's a moth actually that lays its larvae in the soil and it's, it's it cocoons itself. So I do want to go in there and and look for uh, the vine borer and remove them because then next season they'll come back and um i just want to have a little bit of uh control on that so i definitely would do that and then on top of that once y'all guys to remove y'all squash plant do not put them in your compost so burn it because all those eggs will be in your compost so you will like to throw those away okay go ahead and throw those away Hey, Garden State Gardener. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. So, yes, you definitely want to throw those away, burn them. Uh, you don't want to put them in your compost. Oh, thank you. Everybody say, you are so cute. Mama got your ears. You are cold. I didn't do it. I don't remember doing it. Let me hand cold. My hand's cold. Oh, but yes, um, definitely get rid of those. Let's see here. The sweet spot. I am going to try cherry tomatoes this fall, but I am scared of that. <laughs> oh, you going to try cherry tomatoes indoors for the fall? Okay. Okay. Why is it? Mommy, mommy, um, yeah. are you gonna try? Are you gonna try the tomato, uh, cherry tomatoes indoors for the fall? Really cold. Uh, it all depends on where you live. Outdoors, um, I I would try like a um a potted cherry tomato, like one of the dwarf varieties, the little like tiny Tim tomato. So if it get too cold, you can bring it. You can bring it by a window or something like that and bring it in. Oh yeah. Everybody is speaking to everyone. The garden community. Everybody is speaking. Yes, that is it. Everybody is supposed to. Love the garden community. Yeah, Everybody love going. love each other. That's that's what it's all about. Motivating each other. That's it. Oh, I still have hot here for a long time. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, our our fall like for here, we won't get cold until November. Um, the sweet spot. We won't get cold November. until yeah, to, until November, and then that, our frost is coming in to, to destroy. So. That's why I just planted. Uh, I just planted uh, some squash. I had till November, and it takes about fifty days to maturity. So uh, I will be able to harvest some squash uh, by then. Wow! What flowers do you recommend to bring the bees this season? Oh, okay. You have okay. You're pollinated. I have zinnias out there. I actually I have a ton of things. Actually, the purple queens bring in my bumblebees. Um, my purple queens and my purple heart bring in my bumblebees. The zinnia brings in my honeybees. Um, I get a ton of bees just off of those two plants alone. I don't know if you ever grew a uh, purple queen. Um, they love those plants, especially in the morning. So that was a good plant to, uh, to invest in because just one plant, I started all those purple Queens off of one plant. I bought one plant. I cut it up. I put it into like these little small shot cups and then I just branched them out and there they go. Literally cut it, stuck it in the ground. And it just multiplied into those, and they love them. My bumblebees love it, and my bumblebees like my cucumbers and my melons, and my honeybees like my sunflowers and my bell peppers. So, um, try to look into that. 
I love Zinnia and sunflowers. I do too. I have a sunflower head that I need to harvest. It's like this big, guys. It's like leaned over. It's so heavy. I can't wait to harvest. Now I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave some of the ones that are smaller, so I can just have that fall look for my decor for my front porch um, for the fall. So I'm gonna let them kind of dry out. Even the uh, corn is already starting to dry, and I'll be using those as well for my front porch and decor um, for the fall. Waterfall? My flower, Gigi, my flowers are still not blooming for the most part. The water. Your zinnias? <gasps> Gigi, <laughs> ain't blooming? Not blooming. I'm making donut. Oh, sugar. I gotta make sugar. More's backyard. Where's the sugar factory? Since I the big box stores. Oh, out in it. I must miss something at any box store. Okay. Why? What flowers do you recommend? Green peas this season. It's a sharp person here. Why? Okay. Why? Okay. Yes, you get this from any box stores. You can get any zinnias or um oh I got my um, purple queens from National Garden Center at Lowe's um for my pollination. Yes. Oh wow, your marigolds didn't. Hmm. Now the butterfly bushes can't be sometime because if they not um if they feel like they're not getting enough cold weather, they probably wouldn't for a very long time. I think they'll come on probably once it starts to cool down a little bit, your um your butterfly bush might come on. Cause it, it'll think it's spring. Okay, I got you. The pollinators, yeah. Um I just use I go right to Lowe's. I have got my first pack of zinnia seeds from the Dollar Tree when the springtime started. That's why I picked up the zinnia seeds. They don't have them now, but you can definitely find them at Walmart um, or any big box store that has any flower package. Yeah, you can definitely get them there. We had a mild winter. Okay, that's probably um, what's going on. So it has to, the butterfly bush it has to go through that really cold snap. That's probably why they haven't put on. Push, push, push. Chris? Thank you, Chris? Mississippi girl. <laughs> Mississippi girl. <laughs> she likes saying your name. Yeah. Bye. So, yeah, but I did want to come on, you guys. I don't want to stay on too long. I did want to come on here and just kind of tell you guys the, about, like, what I will be planting. I did do a video last season of everything that I planted. I did post it in the community tab so you guys can look at that old video because I did already had a video um, on what uh, I'll be planting for the fall and winter. So I did want to come on here. I ain't going to stay long, but I just wanted to kind of see what you guys was at with y'all uh, fall and winter garden. Yeah, she is so cute and sweet. I know, ain't she? And bad. Bad, too. Don't forget the bad. Okay. Well, the B-A-D. B-A-D. <laughs> I'm not Some blooming, love you. Plants won't bloom. In the Bomb shade. Boom. In the shade, loving plants having Bomb trouble boom. in the sun. Should this you be the problem? Some loving plants won't bloom in the shade. Um... Probably, probably not. A lot of times, uh, plants uh, figuring like to the the amount of cold, especially if it's a perennial. Perennials, all perennials have to go through that dieback time. Uh, especially um, certain flowers, they have to do that dieback time. If not, they'll they'll bush out really pretty, but they won't put on any blooms. I like to like. Um, I like to use, like I said, I like to use my Epsom salt. The Epsom salt will help with uh, um, blossoms, putting on more um, blossoms. That can try to help uh, if there's any kind of deficiency there. But with uh, the magnesium, 
but um it it could be just simple as the weather especially for her to be where she's at it could just be the weather all right you guys i'm excited i'm excited that i came on live and i'll talk to you guys for a little while and guys this is my birthday month yes <laughs> it's my birthday month so but i'm gonna go ahead and head out i appreciate each and every one of you for joining me Joining me. Yes, joining me. So um, that is it, you guys. That is I appreciate guys. each and every one of you for stopping by. Stopping by. Yes, yes. Thank you, guys. Yes. 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 Sister yes. girl going to be yes. 38. 48. No, in a 48. 38. <laughs> 48. So, all right, sweethearts. Y'all stay blessed. Stay blessed. And remember, there's beauty in everyone's garden. And bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, you guys. <laughs>